I've chosen Sir David Attenborough, one of my original boyhood heroes, you might say, um, from the point of view of his interest, his background, and it really resulted in me taking the course that I did through zoology, into biology and through ecology. I suppose you could call him one of the original TV wildlife presenters. I mean, he started in the 1950s in the days of black and white telly and one channel working for the BBC and uh, more or less by accident got involved in a series of programmes called ZooQuest, um, which was where the London Zoo asked people to go out to various corners of the world and collect animals, something perhaps not too kindly looked upon now. But uh, David, as he then was, was um, a young uh, recruit to the BBC from journalism and he went out to help make these films and because the chap who was originally presenting them fell ill on the second series, he was asked to front the programme and quite suddenly he became literally a household name. He's in everyone's sitting rooms, going to strange places like Borneo, looking for the Komodo dragon, going to the forests of Africa and eventually of course looking for things like gorillas. And then, since then, he's, um, he's really travelled all over the world, fronting the programmes and presenting a whole range of not just wildlife documentaries, but also things on global warming and climate change. Yes, he is a scientist. Um, he, he actually studied zoology and geology at a university before going into journalism and uh, the geological aspects have stayed with him throughout the whole of his life really because he's an avid collector of fossils and he tells the story of when he was young um, he was uh, at Leicester which is now Leicester University his, his father was principal of Leicester College and that's not very far away from Charnwood Forest in the English Midlands and he spent his sort of boyhood days there roaming around looking for things and he, he was in an interesting and very ancient landscape he also tells the story, of course, of um, much, much later when there was a famous fossil found in Charnwood, which eventually be called Charnia. And this was the first example of multicellular developed animal life that had been found um, of that particular era. Really, really ancient. We're talking 500 million years ago here. And Sir David always says that he, he was within an inch of finding this thing and, of course, never did. And it was down to somebody else many, many years later who recognised this fossil for what it was. And, of course, it's now actually in Leicester Museum. He manages to blend the crucial aspects of telling a story. That is, first of all, of good information, putting across the information really well, but also showing that he really knows something about what he's talking about. He's not journalism, this is actual real science in terms of being able to communicate the details of things like behaviour interactions in animals, things like what it's like to live in the Arctic ice and the Antarctic, and also how animals communicate with each other. I think most scientists wish they were good communicators. Some are really excellent. Um, quite a lot are not quite so good because often they're too deeply buried in their subject. I'm sure I've got colleagues who would say the same kind of thing. But generally speaking, communication is essential to science. There's no point in doing research and making discoveries just for the sake of it. You have to tell people. We do indeed use David Attenborough's work. Quite a lot of the material which is produced over the years has found its way into our lectures, our seminars, and sometimes is the basis for practical work that we do. So for example, we teach behaviour, and the students look at the behavioural material that he produced and many years ago, back in the 1970s in fact, and they then investigate the kind of situations that he discovered. Things like how animals move around, how they navigate, how they locate themselves in their environments, and how they interact with other species. Uh, basically, this is one of the original tapes from the Trials of Life, um, transmitted um, in the late 1970s, I believe. So we're going to have a look at part of this. Um, he's been dressing like that, um, he's slightly different now, he's been dressing like that since the early days of um, his television career. He gives the impression of being an expert in the field, essentially, and he's, he's effectively equipped and ready to go in terms of um, explaining things to people. So he's definitely in character. So David was um, presented with an honorary doctorate 
uh, back in the summer at Nottingham Trent University as a mark of his many, many years of contribution to communication, to science, to TV journalism. It was an absolute rapturous reception, it really was. I was on the platform just behind him and uh, he came on and was presented um, and then he gave a really, really good um, speech about how he found it so important to communicate science. They are the one place where truth is of crucial importance. He does inspire people, there's no doubt about that. It's his, just his sheer enthusiasm, and that's come through right from the very beginning. I remember watching him on the TV back in the, uh, in the late 1950s, in, in black and white on one channel, and um, he was a really, really um, expert at putting across information, and that gets people interested in the subject. And I think a lot of people have actually come into science because of what Sir David has done. I chose to do zoology because of what I'd seen on the TV. I wanted to find more about these creatures, about where they came from, and what animals actually do, and how they exist, and how they go about their daily lives. So yes, the original work that uh, I saw on the TV, this is back in the 50s and early 60s now, essentially took me to university to read zoology. And I thank you very much indeed for this great honour.